Order. Question number six. Order. Order. Question number six, Jacinda Ardern. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Social Development and asks, how many children has her gov government lifted out of poverty since 2009, if any? Uh, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr. Speaker, there is no one measure of poverty. However, according to the latest MSD Household Incomes Report, child poverty rates were flat between 2009 and 2012 on all standard measures. And I think that's pretty remarkable considering the global financial crisis and what the country went through at that time. In addition, between 2011 and 2012, inequality as measured by the Gini Index fell significantly. Um, in fact, the report shows the widest gap in incomes actually occurred in the mid-2000s and peaked in 2004. Uh, <coughs> point of order, Mr Speaker. I may have missed this in the order, beginning, but order. I... Can I just understand what the point of order is? I asked is? a quite a direct question, um, and I'm not sure order, that the Minister order, accurately no, yeah, answered no, very, that. Very definitely the Minister answered the question immediately. Supplementary question, uh, Jacinda Ardern. Uh, Supplementary to the Minister, if her government is measuring and acting on child poverty and child well-being, why did the United Nations make the criticism in this report that budgetary processes did not enable identification of the children in greatest need, end quote, and more needed to be done to lift children out of poverty? Or is she claiming that the UN is wrong? Mr. Speaker. Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, what I am aware of is that because of when we reported back um, to the, on the UNCROC um, to UNICEF that actually they hadn't taken into consideration the Vulnerable Children's Bill or the Children's Action Plan, so that work wasn't in place. The Vulnerable Children's Board wasn't there. Um, so there's a whole lot of work that has actually gone on that's not been considered as part of the report. I don't think anyone denies that there are children living in this country at a standard that we don't find acceptable, <laughs> but that would be why we have put such a range of of, uh, things in place that make a biggest difference. We're warming up their homes, we're getting them immunised, we're getting them into early childhood education. We are making sure that we wrap support around those children that are most vulnerable, and that is making a difference. Supplementary to the Minister. Supplementary question, Jacinda Ardern. Supplementary, how many children will the Vulnerable Children's Bill lift out of poverty, and how? Mr Speaker. Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, um, the work of the Vulnerable Children's Guilt Bill goes beyond just those children in poverty. It is working with those most vulnerable that are at serious um, risk of harm and neglect in this country. Um, we see that that will affect actually thousands of children. You just need to take the number of notifications that we get to Child, Youth and Family, which is around 150,000. Of them, 60,000 are further action required. That means that we have nearly 90,000 that are not. We need to work with those children at a different response so we're getting in earlier so that they are safer and can grow up and have a happy and healthier life. Point of order, Jacinda Ardern. Uh, point of order, Mr Speaker. My question was quite explicit. It was how many children with a vulnerable children's bill lift out of poverty and how? Uh, and the Minister said that it was doing something else entirely. But in her first answer, though, Mr Speaker, she claimed that the UN hadn't taken into account the impact of the Vulnerable Children Bill order. on poverty. So order. I'm left order. quite confused order. by that response. I, I, acknowledge, order. I acknowledge the point the member's making. In my opinion, on this occasion, the minister basically was saying it's impossible to give an exact number. She then talks about thousands being affected. The way, I don't think the way forward is to repeat that question, because in this case I think it has been addressed. I accept not to the satisfaction, but I'm happy to allow the member an additional supplementary question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, supplementary to the Minister. Will the Vulnerable Children's Bill lift children out of poverty? Mr Speaker, Honourable that Peter. is one part of what is a much bigger piece of work for these children. Actually, they are not getting beaten and hurt and sexually abused because their parents are poor. They are getting... Uh, it is an, an, a, a ongoing, complex piece of work that needs to take into address more than just the income of that family. Actually, poverty is relative. We have had many, many thousands of people that don't have enough money, but they do not treat their children as appallingly as what we see. That's where our attention is at, and I am unapologetic for it. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Jacinda Ardern. Supplementary to the Minister. Does she accept that the last time UNICEF acknowledges New Zealand made progress on lifting children out of poverty was when Labor introduced working for families, which John Key called communism by stealth? 
Mr Honourable Speaker, Paula Bennett. no I don't. What I accept is that actually dur um, during the years of 2009 to 2012, what we saw is that child poverty rates were flat. What I see is that more than 300,000 homes have been warmed up thanks to this government. What I've seen is that actually free health care for under six-year-olds has been extended thanks to this Minister of Health. What I'm seeing is an increase in the number of children in early childhood education thanks to that Minister of Education. What I'm seeing is an absolute emphasis on those children that are being abused and neglected, that is a comprehensive piece of work that there is no easy answer to, but we're willing to put a plan in place and tackle it. I'm going to try one more time, Mr Speaker. Order. 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 Supplementary question, Jacinda Ardern. Supplementary to the Minister. Can the Minister name what explicit policies her government has introduced to try and improve... The economic, the economic well-being of children living in poverty. Not insulation, not ECE, but children living in poverty because their parents don't have enough to survive. Order. Order. Honourable. Order. Honourable Paula Bennett. Well, Mr Speaker, I'd quite happily talk about the 16,548 fewer people that are on benefit now than there were a year ago. I'd quite happily talk about the 7,258 sole parents whose children are now better off because their parents are in work thanks to the policies of this government. So seeing those children actually in families where there is a better income than what they get on benefit and that they're able to get ahead. I could talk about the economic policies of actually putting that money back into the schools which help them. I could talk about Kids Can and the money that we put in there. I can put about the money that we put in breakfast in schools that Order. we're running on. Order. Supplementary question. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Jacinda Ardern. Supplementary to the Minister. What does she say then to the two out of five children who are living in poverty but whose parents are in work? Honourable Paula Bennett. Well, Mr Speaker, what I could do is actually qu quote the um, UNDP Director Helen Clark, who pointed out in August in New Zealand, we have poverty here in New Zealand, but it is relative poverty. No one lives below the $2.25 a day. No one even lives under $5 a day. Point of order. 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 A point of order has been called, and I will hear it. Uh, Mr Speaker, I asked explicitly for what, uh, what the government was doing for working families living Order. in poverty. The member asked what would, sh what would the minister say to par uh, children living in poverty whose parents are in work. The minister then responded and s said what she would say. Question number seven, Jonathan Young.